Hi, this is Matt with State of Flex here with the Oscar nominations for 2022's slate of films. This here is my complete list of all the nominees highlighted are the ones that I've seen. So as you can see, I've seen quite a few of the nominations. Um, so I'm going to go through, deliver the individual categories and the nominations for them, and then offer what I think was snubbed from that section. So we're going to start big. We're going to start Best Picture and work our way down. Best Picture nominees were All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Banshees, Vanna Sheeran, Elvis, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun, Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. What I felt was snubbed from this category was Glass Onion and Triple R. Triple R was always kind of a fool's hope to get that nomination, but I really thought it might be able to pull it off, and I'm really disappointed that it did not get in there. Um, the ones that kind of surprised me are Avatar The Way of Water and Top Gun Maverick. I thought it was going to be one or the other. The Academy was only going to honor one major blockbuster. The fact that they honored two is kind of impressive. Um, so, there you have it. Those are your top ten. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Banshees of Anna Sharon, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. Moving on to Best Actor. We have Austin Butler for Elvis, Colin Farrell for The Banshees of Anna Sharon, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, Paul Mescal for After Sun, Bill Nighy for Living, who I thought was snubbed from this was Gabriel LaBelle for The Fablemans. He gave a fantastic performance in the lead role, and uh, I was really surprised, uh, or really disappointed, not surprised, but disappointed he didn't get recognition. Uh, and uh, I was delighted to see Bill Nighy for Living. Living is a remake of one of my all-time favorite movies, a, an Akira Kurosawa film called Ikiru, that uh, Living is hitting theaters, I believe, in wide release this very weekend, so you'll have your chance to check that one out. I'm looking forward to doing so myself. Moving on to the Best Actress category, we have Kate Blanchett for Tar, Anna de Armas for Blonde, Andrea Riseborough for To Leslie, uh, Michelle Williams for The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Uh, there were two surprises here for me. Uh, Andrea Riseborough for To Leslie. This is a film I've never heard of, and this is a name that's cropped up uh, only just now for me. I'm looking forward to investigating this one a little further. The big surprise for me was Ana de Armas for Blonde. Not because it's a bad performance. I honestly would have contributed it myself as one of the five best performances of the, of the year. The problem is, is the movie is not recognized as being particularly good, though she is great in it. Uh, so I was surprised, happily so, to see Ana de Armas get the nomination here. Uh, who I felt was snubbed was Janelle Monet for Glass Onion, who gave a spectacular performance. Easily the best of her career and the best performance in that movie, which is saying a lot, because it was a phenomenal movie. Moving on to Best Supporting Actor. We have Brendan Gleeson for The Banshees of Inna Sheeran, Brian Thierry Henry for Causeway, Judd Hirsch for The Fablemans, Barry Cogan for The Banshees of Inishirin, and Kihoi Kwan for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Way to go, my man. I want him so badly to win that Oscar, and I think very much that he is going to do so. This was a spectacular category. Great nominees all the way around. Brian Terry Henry was the big surprise there, though he's a great actor and has put in a lot of good work, so I'm glad to see he got the nomination. The only person I would have slid in there would have been Colin Farrell for The Batman. He gave a tr transcendent performance as the Penguin, and unlike anything I've ever seen him do, and you stand that performance up to the one he gave in Banshees of Inna Sheeran, it's a night and day difference. He is a tremendous actor, and I hope he gets uh, a, an Oscar someday. Maybe this is his year. Uh, Best Supporting Actress, we have Angela Bassett for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, who is probably going to take the gold home. Hong Chao for The Whale. Uh, Carrie Condon for The Banshees of Anna Sheeran. Jamie Lee Curtis, who's never been nominated before for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And Stephanie Hsu for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. She was the big surprise for me. I'm glad to see she got nominated, though I would have liked to have seen Zoe Kazan for She Said get a nomination. 
Um, that said, I think this is going to be Angela Bassett's year. She is a tremendous actress who's put in a lot of good work throughout the years, and she is the absolute highlight of Black Panther, elevating that film. All right, moving on to Best Animated Film, we have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which is likely going to win. We have Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, made my top movies of the year last year. It is an adorable movie. I'm shocked that it got a nomination for Best Animated because of how much live-action components are in the film, but it is a well-deserved movie that I would like to see take the gold home. Uh, uh, also nominated was Puss in Boots' The Last Wish. Uh, the Sea Beast, which was the big surprise, and then Turning Red. Uh, what I would have nominated is Apollo Ten and a Half, uh, Childhood, uh, Space Age Childhood. Um, but I want Marcel Lachelle with shoes on to win, though I recognize Pinocchio will take it home. Best Director. We have Martin McDonough for The Banshees of Inishirin, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Schinart, or Daniels, for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans, Todd Field for Tar, and Ruben Osklud for Triangle of Sadness. Who I would have nominated is S.S. Rajamuli. That said, this is a pretty uh, by-the-numbers uh, category. The only shock I had is Triangle of Sadness taking it over Top Gun. I honestly thought Top Gun Maverick would get a directorial nomination, and it did not. That kind of surprised me. Um, best Adapted Screenplay. All Quiet on the Western Front uh, by Edgar uh, Berger, Ed Leslie Patterson, and Ian Stokel. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery by Ryan Johnson, my boy. Uh, Living by Kazu uh, Ishiguro, based on Akiru. Uh, Top Gun Maverick by Peter Craig, Justin Marks, Aaron Kruger, Aaron Warren Singer, Christopher Marquis, and Women Talking by Sarah Polly. Sarah Polly is one hell of a filmmaker, a great writer. Uh, her film Away From Her in 2007 was one of my favorite films that year. Sarah Polly has put in a lot of great work. I'm glad that she got a recognition uh, for that work here with Women Talking for both, both Best Picture and Best Screenplay. I'd like to see her take that Oscar home. However, I think it's going to go to All Quiet on the Western Front or possibly Glass Onion. I would love to see Ryan Johnson win. He's my uh, favorite active filmmaker uh, uh, at this time. and. Uh, if he wins for Glass Onion, I will be squeeing happily. Um, that said, Top Gun Maverick got a nomination for writing. It is just the first Top Gun again, but mushed with a new hope. And it got a nomination for writing. The, uh, the Eric, or sorry, Aaron Kruger authored this film, also authored, if memory serves, Transformers 2, Revenge of the Fallen. He has a chance to have a golden statue for his writing contributions. That said, he's also written some okay other feature films, such as, you know, <laughs> Reindeer Games with Ben Affleck and Scream 3, the notoriously worst of the Scream movies, though I, I have a, a love and affection for Scream 3, but come on, guys. Uh, what I would have nominated in place of Top Gun is She Said, which is a spectacular movie, really well written. That screenplay is fantastic, and I'm surprised it did not get a screenplay nomination. All right, best original screenplay, we have The Banshees of Inishirin by Martin McDonough, Everything Everywhere All at Once, written by Daniels. The Fablemans by Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner. This is Spielberg's first uh, nomination for screenplay. So if he takes this one home, that'll be a like monumental feat for him. Uh, especially since the only other screenplays he's contributed actively to or credited to are like Close Encounters of the Third Kind and E.T., both of which did not win. Uh, and that's saying something. Um, Tar by Todd Field and Triangle of Sadden by, uh, Sadness by Ruben Ostland. Uh, the only thing I would have included in there is The Menu. Uh, I thought that had a fantastic screenplay. Best Cinematography, All Quiet on the Western Front. Bardo, False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths, never heard of it, but there you have. Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. Uh, the thing that I thought was glaringly omitted here is The Banshees of Inishirin is easily the most gorgeous looking movie I've seen of 2022. 
I was shocked and astonished that it did not get a nomination, uh, and frankly disappointed. Um, the other one for cinematography that surprises me is both The Batman, but more importantly, Top Gun. Top Gun had a spectacular cinematography. I'm not a fan of that movie, but that's what you nominate that movie for. You nominate it for director, you nominate it for cinematography. And those are the two it wasn't nominated for. So everything else is just kind of a pity nomination at best. Screenplay? I digress and move on. Two best film editing, The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, everything, everywhere, all at once, Tar, Top Gun, Maverick, I think this uh, is a good category, I'm fine and comfortable with all the nominees, don't have any really contributions uh, outside of that. Uh, best original score, All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, The Banshees of Inishirin, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, and The Fablemans, I think this is going to be The Fablemans year, John Williams uh, is bringing it home, uh, I think, uh, but I could be wrong. What was glaringly omitted was Michael Giacchino's spectacular score for The Batman, uh, which is my favorite score of this decade so far. It is such a gorgeous score, and it didn't even make the Oscar shortlist. It was always going to be ineligible. We knew this back in December, um, and it still rubs me the wrong way. Best original song, applause from Tell It Like a Woman, Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick, Lift Me Up for, uh, for Black Panther, Rakanda Forever, Not To Not To from Triple R, and This Is A Life from Everything Everywhere All At Once. I think Not To Not To is going to win. Not To Not To is a spectacular song and the most important piece of music in any movie that is so pivotal to the movie itself to function. Not to not takes that home, as it should. Triple R should have gotten way more nominations than it did, but if this is the Oscar that it takes home, it is a worthy one at that. What is missing is La Vida Es Una by Carol G for Puss in Boots. Excellent song. Surprised that didn't get a nomination. Uh, best visual effects, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther Wakanda Forever and Top Gun Maverick. I think Avatar is going to take it home as it should. That is the most stunning looking movie I've seen visually in like eons. Uh, that said, Black Panther? Uh, that one surprised me. I would have swapped Black Panther with Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That was a much more visually interesting movie with great special effects that were perfectly in tone with the film itself. Whereas Black Panther had this hyper kind of realistic look that occasionally lost its uh, hyper re reality. And there's a couple scenes in that one that look a little stick figure-y and uh, that, that's disappointing to me that that one got over Doctor Strange. Best sound, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. I think Elvis is going to take it home, however, The Batman should take it home. Uh, the Batman's mere presence, every time he shows up on screen, before it happens, you hear this, like, boom, boom, boom of his footsteps. And it's such an imposing, visceral threat that fills you as the viewer with dread, even though you know he is the good guy that you are rooting for. That is skill. That is a presence of sound that is just stunning. I want Batman to take it. I think it's going to go to Elvis or Top Gun. Uh, costume design. Uh, Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. It's likely going to be Elvis. I would like to have seen uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once take that home. But uh, what's missing, what got snubbed? I would say Triple R. Triple R had great costumes. Um, best makeup and hairstyling. All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, uh, everything, oh sorry, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. Uh, for makeup and hairstyling, I, uh, I don't see it going to anybody but Elvis, however, uh, maybe The Whale will take it. The Batman should take it. Making Colin Farrell look like the Penguin is a stunning feat, but all the way through, everything about the makeup and hairstyling and how Bruce Wayne looks and has been criticized for like the emo Bruce thing uh, is just a great use of makeup, uh, and I loved that. Uh, best production design, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablemans. My guess is that goes to Elvis. Um, maybe Babylon. Best documentary feature, uh, All the Breaths, uh, All That Breathes, sorry. Best Documentary Feature, let's start that over. Best Documentary Feature, All That Breathes. 
all the beauty and the bloodshed, fire of love, a uh, house made of splinters and uh, na Navalny, Navalny? Um, fire of love, I think, is going to take it home. Um, I uh, that's it truly is the only one I've seen off this list, though. I'm going to look into more of them. Uh, I would have liked to have seen Volcano Rescue from Wakari. Uh, get a nomination, that's a Netflix documentary, but uh, I don't even think it was eligible, so there you go. Best documentary short subject, The Elephant Whispers Howl Out, uh, How Do You Measure a Year, The Martha Mitchell Effect, and Stra uh, Stranger at the Gate. Haven't seen any of them, uh, but good on you guys. Best animated short, A Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse, The Flying Sailor, Ice Merchants, My Year of Dicks. An ostrich told me the world is fake, and I think I believe it. Uh, I haven't seen any of these, and I want to see them all. So, there you have it. Best live action short film, The Irish, er, An Irish Goodbye, Evalu Le Popel, Night Ride, and The Red Suitcase. Uh, I haven't seen any of those, however, the uh, Le Poubelle is on uh, Disney Plus, and I almost watched it the other day. I wish I would have now, it would have had something to say, so um, I will check that out uh, soon here. Best International Film, All Quiet on the Western Front, from Germany, Argentina, 1985, from Argentina, Close, Belgium, EO, Poland, and The Quiet Girl. I started watching Argentina 1985, and I'm compelled to watch more, but uh, other than that, I haven't seen any of these, and I look forward to watching all of them. I've heard great things about EO, and even though All Quiet on the Western Front has been nominated for so many other uh, awards, don't be surprised if Poland takes it with EO. This movie is uh, like garnering a lot of awards attention and stuff all across the different uh, award ceremonies. Don't be surprised if that takes it. Uh, what is missing from that? Uh, I think the big snub is Decision to Leave, but Triple R, which was ineligible because India did not nominate it, um, those are the two glaring uh, uh, omissions there. But what did you think of the Oscar nominees? Who's going to win Best Picture? I personally think this is going to be kind of a 2016 all over again, where you had La La Land versus um, Manchester by the Sea. It kind of divided the votes, and Moonlight took the Oscar. I think that's going to kind of happen again. I think this is a battle between the Fablemans and the Banshees of Inishirin, and they're going to cut the votes, and everything everywhere all at once might take that gold statue at home. Or maybe Austin Butler and Elvis uh, will get bolstered by the recent passing of uh, Lisa Marie Presley. Uh, we shall see in the uh, time coming up. Um, and Austin Butler gives a hell of a performance. If he takes that Oscar statue at home, it is a deserved win. Uh, he is every bit as good as Colin Farrell is in uh, The Banshees of Inna Sheeran or Brendan Fraser in The Whale. So uh, don't be surprised if Austin takes that gold statue at home. Let me know what you think of the comments down below. What was a snubbed for you? What would you have liked to have seen? Or what do you think they got absolutely right? Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Peace.